<laughs> Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and guests that aren't here today, Thomas William Bennett. How many people in this room know Thomas William Bennett? Why he should have a place in history. Don't worry about that. I'm going to take care of that for you. <laughs> Thomas William Bennett was born April 7th, 1967 in Morgantown, West Virginia. He grew up in a family where the parents were staunch Baptists, Southern Baptists. And Thomas accepted their religion. He lived by the tenants. And one of the things he learned was that it is never okay to take a human life unless the situation is terribly egregious. And as Tom grew older, went into high school, then into college, he actually became kind of an activist in a way. The Vietnam War was going on, and Thomas did not believe that our involvement in Vietnam was an egregious use of military force. So he spoke about this. But the other thing about West Virginians that you have to understand is they are really patriotic. West Virginians are patriots. So young Thomas had a dilemma, didn't he? He wanted to serve the military because America called, but his religion didn't allow him to kill another human being. Well, lucky for Thomas, there was a program in the United States called the Conscientious Objector Program. There's two different categories. One of them allows a person to go into the military, but they don't carry a firearm. And let's just call it a CO for the sake of convenience. COs in the Army or Marine Corps or whatever, they don't even practice a shooting rifle at the rifle range in boot camp. So Thomas enlisted in the Army mid-1968, and he signed up as a medic. His intention was to work in a mass unit or another hospital in Vietnam. He wanted to go to Vietnam, but not be an infantryman. So January 1st, 1969, Thomas Bennett arrives in South Vietnam. Instead of being assigned to a MASH unit, though, he's assigned to Bravo Company, 1st Battalion, 14th Army, 14th Infantry, which by and large is a recon outfit that goes out in force. So Thomas William Bennett, finds himself up in the Central Highlands of South Vietnam with, a, with this unit of recon specialists. The first five weeks or so go along pretty good. Aside from a few mosquito bites and cold and rain and some fog, it's not too bad. In fact, he writes home to his mother and says, it ain't so bad. Well, February 9th, everything changed. Bravo Company went out to help Delta Company get out of an ambush and on the way there, Bravo Company is heavily ambushed by about a battalion of NBA soldiers. So it was a trap. So it's time for Thomas to go to work. He's the medic. He doesn't carry a firearm, any weapons at all, so he has extra medical supplies. Well, Thomas, during the next six hours, runs out into the field of fire. I mean, there's machine gun coming. There's grenades, mortars. He goes into the fire, and he rescues five soldiers by carrying them back to the lines. He's a very brave guy. He goes a little bit above and beyond the call of duty, doesn't he? And that night, his platoon sergeant starts writing notes for the Silver Star Citation. Very high award. The plan is the next day, they're going to try to get out of there, pick up their dead and wounded, and get back to play coup and regroup. Well, unfortunately, on the 10th of February, it's all fogged in. They can't get any helicopters. So they have to wait till the 11th. Morning breaks on the 11th, they break their camp, so to speak, and they start heading up the hill to clear out an LZ to perform an extraction. Well, that NBA battalion is still around, and they ambush Bravo Company again on the 11th. The fighting is just as horrible as it was on the 9th, and again, soldiers are hitting the ground, wounded, a few dead, and Corporal Thomas William Bennett is back to work. This time he runs out and he rescues three more people. So this is eight rescues in the last two days, two to three days. But there's a fourth soldier out there, about 75 yards down the trail. And Bennett is getting ready to go out and get that soldier when his platoon sergeant stops him. 
no, you can't go out there. I, I need you. You're gonna, you're gonna get killed if you try this again. Well, by now you figured out that that's not gonna stop Tom Bennett, right? So off he goes. And unfortunately for Thomas Bennett, his platoon sergeant is right. He gets about 20 steps down the trail and he falls mortally wounded. Well, from here, there's a lot of story that you could go into as far as what happened to Bravo Company after this. But let's stick with Thomas Bennett. A year later, his mother and stepfather are standing in front of President Richard Nixon at the White House, and they accept Thomas's silver, posthumous silver star and purple heart. But there was another little trinket to go along with it, and that was the Medal of Honor. So Thomas William Bennett takes his place in history, not only as a Medal of Honor winner, but among the tens of thousands of conscientious objectors who do go into the military, Thomas becomes the second in the history of the United States to receive the Medal of Honor as a conscientious objector. And, the, and this program, the CO program, has been around since 1776. There were COs way back in the Civil War and, and, and throughout all of our wars. So from now on, when you hear the word the name Thomas William Bennett, and you're asked to show your hands, I think that you will agree that you will remember Thomas William Bennett and what he did in American history. Mr. Toastmaster. Speech number five in the storytelling manual. This is a tough one. And I'm happy, I just gave this speech about a month ago, so I'm super happy to be able to evaluate Patrick on this one. Because I spent some time recently thinking about what it takes to bring a, a historical character to life. How do you put those words together to do that? And I think you provided a very interesting and inspirational story and pulled it really nicely together. The objectives of the number five speech are to understand the purpose of of stories about historical events or pe people and use the storytelling skills developed in all the preceding projects to tell a story about a historical event or person. And clearly you met, all, met those two objectives out, very outstanding. I liked your opening when you stood back, one big, and your visual aid here was perfect, this, uh, one word here, or three words here, Thomas William Bennett, got our attention. What got our attention, I think what was great about your opening is that you took the time to ask everybody in the room if they knew who this person was. I think everybody thought every, somebody was going to raise their hand, <laughs> and none of us did, which just made it that much more intriguing. Perfect opening. Your, uh, your, as I mentioned, your visual aid was really effective to put it here on the board. If I had one thing to say, I noticed that for the first third of your speech, you had an open stance this direction. You were pointing, up, you were sort of leading us towards the board, but there was just the one name up here. And so one thing that might be a little bit more effective would be to, to use that. And you moved the lectern out of the way, and you got closer connection, but then you stayed right here in one spot. So using the space a little bit more, and where your stance opens, we will look. And so when you were making a, more of a point on about his name, if you're pointing and you have that open stance, and then when you're talking about other details, you're doing something else. That might just divert. I have very little to, to talk about <laughs> because it was such an outstanding speech. It was very good. And one of the things you asked me to, ask, to look at was, was it memorable? And I would say yes, it was very memorable. What I, what I will take home from it was not the name, but that he was a conscientious objector and served in the military. And I think that was, and if, you, if there's more that you want us to remember, I think that a little bit different structure, maybe some triads, some, some more structure to pull that together to, to make some connection in our, in our minds will help, but definitely we'll remember the concept. I thought you had great eye contact with everybody, a very comfortable style of speaking, 
and your description really had a profusion of details in it. And that helped us to visualize the story and place ourselves in that, in, in the action, feeling it, hearing it, and hearing what was going on. In, I will already talk about that, thank you. <laughs> all in all, fantastic stories, number five storytelling speech, and I look forward to more speeches from you. Thank you.